They got like two buttons here, and I'm trying to. All right. What's up, everybody? The commissioner here, Jimmy Milstead. And we are on episode seven of the Storks Desk here on this Wednesday, November 16th, 2022. Uh, man, it's kind of cold out. But uh, the hockey's going. We're in week six of fantasy, uh, the league fantasy hockey, and uh, it's been a it's been a fun ride so far uh, for the chase for the Stork Cup. Without further ado, uh, here's your host uh, with the most, uh, my favorite Canadian, uh, Kevin Stork. What is up, buddy? How you doing? How's it going, guys? Awesome. Another week. Yes. Um. And it was Hall of Fame week, uh, Stork, uh, this past, Hockey Hall of Fame week here in Toronto. Uh, we had a bunch of guys and uh, one lady uh, get inducted. Uh, I haven't had a chance to even watch the speeches yet, but uh, the theme, I think, uh, was uh, Swedish, uh, right? Uh, we had the Sedins, uh, Daniel Alfredson, longtime senator, uh, Bobby Lou, the Revol Roberto Luongo. Yeah, uh, well He's not Swedish, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, well, the the one Finnish lady, I think she was, uh, or she was from Finland, right? I believe uh, so. Yeah. Not familiar with her story, and then like Herb Carnegie, old time. Uh, uh, he was like the first African American, right? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he. I mean, he did well, a lot for hockey, but he never actually played in any oh, okay. game. Okay, so that's Willie O'Ree that actually played. Yeah, he played. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've been meaning to watch that ceremony, and I haven't had a chance to yet. But, uh, anyways, congratulations to those guys. Always cool to uh, see people get recognized for outstanding careers. And uh, one day, Stork, you'll be in the uh, the league fantasy yeah. hockey Hall of Fame. Right uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that's uh, probably the number one thing that happened this week in hockey. But. Uh, as far as the league fantasy hockey, uh, we had some uh, great matchups last weekend. I'm trying to pull up my page here. I failed to have it out, up. Uh, week five last week, we had uh, Stork. You beat uh, the Frozen Norsemen to go to three and two, uh, 13 to eight. Pretty good uh, game for you to get back in the win column. Uh, Prober Etiquette continues to roll. They're the number one team in the league, five and oh. They beat or uh, doubled up the DuPont Pipe Players, uh, 12 to six. Tim Kelly falls to one and four. Uh, D.B. Cooper back in the win column, 15-4, uh, trouncing of Julio's Yuma. Julio struggling right now. 15-4 uh, to four losers. Uh, D.B. Cooper goes to 3-2. and two. Uh, Over in the Ovechkin division last week, uh, we had the Woody Woodpeckers fall in a thriller to yours truly, the Adam Americans, 10-9 uh, late, too. Uh, it was like pretty much the last game. Brandon Tanev, I literally uh, celebrated his goal because that put me over the top by one goal to edge – Mark Wood out. Uh, Mark Wood drops to two and three, and Jimmy goes to three and two. Uh, the Texas freezing Kuznetsov still struggling, but it looks like they're doing a lot better this week. We'll get into that in a bit. Uh, they dropped one to the Nova Fire Brigade, 12 to eight. Uh, Scott's team went goes to four and one. They're firing at all cylinders. Jaden goes to zero, four and one. And then uh, the Washington Wendingo, they're playing great. They defeated uh, Josh's Wyoming Great Apes. 14 to 6. Uh, Josh goes to 3 and 2 after starting 3 and 0. Oh, he's dropped two straight. Uh, on the opposite side, uh, Waylon started 0 and 2. He's won three straight. So uh, that was last week. Stork, uh, Don Cherry ended up going 500, picking uh, out of those league matchups. He went 3 and 3, and he's 16 and 13 in his prognostications this week. Uh, any of the uh, highlights for you last week uh, in those fantasy matchups? Oh, well, I mean, it was a good week. Uh, and like uh, I touched on last week, uh, the further into the season we go, the more separation is going to happen. So uh, teams that are one and four don't have to panic yet, but uh, they got to get it going. Right, you. So, yes, like we said, Probert Etiquette, unbelievable right now, uh, has yet to lose. He's in one this week so far. Ooh, <laughs> oh. I know Dave Snellgrove. Um, man, he has he got a player on his roster, Stork. Bo Horvat, struggling uh, Vancouver Canucks, but this guy's putting up unbelievable numbers. Uh, have you been able to watch a lot of Canucks? Yeah, I have, actually. Uh, he's a good hockey player. He hustles. 
Uh, I watched him in junior, and uh, he was the same kind of player. He just never stopped skating. Uh, he's he's a really good hockey player. Yeah, he's tearing it up. Uh, I wonder if he's going to be – you think he, that'd be a trade piece for Vancouver? I don't, I don't know what their uh, cap situation – I don't know how that what he's getting paid. I don't know if he'd fit on a Oh, they got team. lots of room on the Vancouver uh, cap, but uh, oh. it's uh, – I mean, uh, I – think they're talking to his agent right now and uh nothing has been uh, signed but uh there's a good chance uh Bo will stay in Vancouver yeah so the embarrassment of riches for Probert continues this guy's roster uh looking really good uh but uh he's still in first place you got DB Cooper three and two uh yourself the Langley Scorpions uh they're they're battling pretty pretty hard uh the three and two and then it kind of gets a little watery, uh, watered down. Uh, Huma struggling one, three, and one. Uh, the Frozen Norseman at one and four, and the Dupont Pipeliners one and four. They're playing each other this week, Nick and Tim. Frozen Norseman and Dupont. So somebody's got to come out of that one. Battle. Yeah, That'll be a go. huge battle. That one. The loser of that one will be one and five. So we'll see how that goes. Over in the Ovechkin uh, Nova Fire Brigade is the the class of that division so far. Like we said, four and one. Scott Lanham doing a great job. He's right now on fire. He's got 10 goals this week already up on Adna. Uh, Washington Wendigo, like we said, I don't think they're getting a lot of respect uh, around the league, especially in Don Cherry's rankings. We'll get to that in the middle of the show. But he's 3-2. and two. Uh, Adna followed right behind him, 3-2, and two, and the Great Apes uh, fall into 3-2. and two. So a little bit closer in the Ovechkin division. And then we got the Woody Woodpeckers, 2-3, and three, and... Jaden still looking for his first win. He might get it this week. Zero four and one is Jaden. Everybody's got a point. So, um, what do you think of the division races, Stork? No, uh, it's uh, it's shaping up uh, pretty much how the uh, prognosticator uh, had it down. But uh, lots of season left, and uh, I'm rooting for Texas to, to get a big win this week. Yep. Yeah, um, he is uh he's hungry. I talk to him every day uh, when he sets his lineups. Uh, I know uh he's been just riddled with the injuries. Uh Zach Wierenski, I don't know if we talked about that last week. I don't know that happened over the weekend. Uh terrible news for Columbus. Uh uh he's out for the year with an upper body injury uh, as he went to the boards wrong after missing a hit I think on Travis Konechny. Yeah. Uh, I think they got Patrick Laine out for a while again. Uh, again, Mars Leakins, Jake Bean. Oh man, if a team <laughs> it hasn't had l- bad luck and injuries this year, uh, besides my Capitals, it's been the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, I think they might be ready to <laughs> just put their hat in the, the lottery for Connor Bedard. Uh, I, I, I expected better things for Columbus Blue Jackets. I'll tell you that story. Well, I mean, with Johnny Hockey going there, uh, uh Patrick uh, Line got pretty excited about him coming because uh, I, I think he was uh, wondering what he was doing in Columbus, but uh, I think uh, it uh, lit him up a little bit to have Johnny Hockey there, but now he's hurt. And for the last couple of years, he's had a some uh, injury woes. He keeps getting hurt, so it's uh, really hurting his uh, his numbers, that's for sure. Yep, uh, there's a couple other injuries that are- off the top of my head, I'm not thinking straight here at the moment. I think Mark Andre Fleury was held out of practice today. That would be a big blow to Frozen Norseman, uh, Nick Reedy. Uh, he's already got a shaky play from Jack Campbell. That's a big reason I think Nick's struggling. Uh, uh, he can Nick uh, Mark Andre Fleury started to play uh, has been starting to play better, and uh, I'm not sure exactly what the extent of his injury was i don't know if you saw that story that was yeah i don't think it's that bad i i think they uh he might have tweaked something a little bit so uh he may miss a game or two but uh i i'm not hearing anything uh really bad there yeah so uh on the opposite side of the spectrum uh how about the new jersey Devils? stark uh just hit a 10 game win uh they beat the montreal canadians last night Pretty good. Uh, hey. These guys, these guys are young, fast, and uh, Vitek Vanacek's back in the net. So uh, I know Scott Lanham's got him. That helps him out. He was struggling in the crease with injuries. But uh, the New Jersey Devils, uh, Jasper Bratt, uh, their blue line looks pretty good. 
Dougie Hamilton. Um, Jack Hughes is uh, definitely uh, taking it to a, another level. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but a couple of years ago there, he kind of struggled finding his way into the NHL, but uh, I think he found his way and uh, all the hype about Jack Hughes is uh, starting to take fruition. Yep. And the Boston Bruins are still on a heater. Um, uh, Vegas Golden Knights finally lost to that last night to the Sharks, but they, they've been red hot. So there's some teams I, I kind of counted, counted out. I didn't think the Devils would make that next step, but here they are uh, just uh, making me eat crow. Uh, I'm ready to believe in the New Jersey Devils, that's for sure. So um, they are looking unbelievable. I'm not sure what their upcoming schedule looks like. Oh, and another injury was Mason Appleton. I don't know if anybody had him. He's out eight to 12 weeks. I just saw that on my um, my yeah. webpage here. So, oh, and John Drew in four to six weeks. There's been some heavy injuries coming across the news desk here. Um, that I forgot to even mention, but, uh, so the Bruins we touched base on, I think, oh, Linus Allmark uh, in net for them. Uh, he was the number two star of the week in the NHL. Uh, I haven't really given him en enough, uh, love. Uh, I know they're missing Swayman. Uh, this guy's gotten it done. Um, can, can, can you imagine, uh, how good Buffalo would have been had they kept this guy? I, Cause they're kind of falling off the radar, but Linus Allmark's really find a spot there in Boston. Yeah, well, I mean, Boston plays a much better uh, defensive game than uh, he, they did with Buffalo. Uh, I think he was just a victim like uh, all the other uh, Buffalo Sabres back then. They were a yeah. team that was lost from uh, management right down to the ice. But uh, I'm sure he was uh, glad to get a fresh start in Boston, and he's... Uh, relishing that number one spot right now and he's uh it's going to be tough to take him off it when swayman comes back yep that'll be a good uh good goalie uh backup goalie to have in uh jeremy swayman um uh, i'm still not sure how long he's out but he's been on the shelf for a little bit already but yeah. Yeah. so uh, yeah last week uh your man miko ranton took home the number one star colorado uh seems like i haven't watched a lot of colorado games lately i know they've been uh uh, having a couple injury problems with uh, Val Nichushkin, but uh, Miko Rantanen's uh, been unbelievable, and he's on your team, Stork. Langley Scorpions, uh, great player. My number, number one, one pick. Yeah, so uh, you knew what you were doing there. Oh, yeah. And then i uh, got to give some love to Adam Fox on the blue line for the New York Rangers. He ended up, I think he had a shorty point, a, a couple of game winners. Uh, he got the number three star. Uh in the NHL for our stars of the week. Uh, I put the vote out to all of our guys after our week was done. Uh, what did I do with that? Um, I know Miko Rantan was number one. We put him up there. We also had Jack Eichel from last week. Uh, actually, no, we gave Jack Eichel the number one star for that revenge game on Buffalo. He had a hat trick. He also had a, four goals. I think last week, Miko Rantan got number two and, uh, kind of, Kind of the same old, same old with Connor McDavid. This guy keeps racking it up. Uh, he ended up with our third star. So uh, we got to give more love stork to the goalies next week and blue liners because I know there's some blue liners out there I, I keep overlooking myself. But uh, speaking of goalies, you want to talk about goalie settings uh, for next year? I think uh, maybe we uh, have to address this. Uh, this year, too late, but uh, me running the league uh, – kind of ran into some issues where I, I probably didn't know what I was doing setting the league up, but uh, uh, probably next year we'll probably have to go down to maybe uh, having max uh, three goalies on your roster at one time. What do you think? Yeah, I, uh, I totally agree with that. Um, uh, I mean, uh, two goalies you can get away with. Uh, three is a nice uh, comfy situation, but uh, when you get uh, four and five goalies on your roster, and, of course, that's not including uh, your IR slots. So, you know, you don't have to count those. But uh, I think we need to have a limit of three uh, roster spots for goaltenders next year. Yeah, as always, uh, I don't make the decision myself. Uh, I always put it up to a Democratic vote. Here. Yeah, we'll, we'll all vote on it, right? But I'm just yeah. saying, like, things that we uh, 
probably didn't expect, at least in my, I know uh, you're an experienced fantasy player in other leagues. Uh, just as far as settings, I think the game started a uh, stat that you're trying to win that category is why people kind of have hidden goalies on their roster and in advance. I mean, but well, I mean, that to... can uh, turn around and bite them too, because uh, the more goalies you have, the more, uh, the less uh, 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 skaters you have. Uh, so, I mean, there, there's some good and bad to doing that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah I mean, you, you don't really need four goaltenders on your roster and, you know, especially when the, uh, you know, the roster size is only 17 players. Three goalies is more than enough to have on your roster at one time. Yeah, so exactly. That's exactly what I was going to mention. You, probably... Now, you wanted, you wanted to talk about uh, eliminating uh, games started next year for goaltenders, and uh, that would probably fix that problem, uh, aside from us uh, making it a limit of three goaltenders. Yeah. So, like I said, I mean, um, every every week I'm looking for suggestions if there's, like, something you're – that's probably the biggest trend uh, I've been seeing is just there's an arms – or there's a race to get those goalie starts, and I think that's why – because there's certain teams – I know Mark Wood, he was looking for a goaltender this week. I think he ended up picking up Bennington back. He had him before, and he had dropped him. Blues are starting to get it together, but uh, I know a couple days ago he hasn't been – happy with Darcy Kemper and he's struggling to find another goaltender. And, uh, it, it was pretty, uh, the rations were, uh, pretty yeah, slim there's not much there. out there. I've got yeah. three right now. And, uh, normally on my teams, I only have two, but, uh, I, uh, I kind of like the three I got right now. I'll hold on to them. I'm hoping, uh, Jerry, uh, gets it together, uh, this week cause he's going to be playing a couple of games. So, yeah. I'm going to give him, uh, he's, he's on a short noose with me because I, you know, my goaltending is really bad. It's been bad all season and, uh, I could easily be five and oh with my, uh, with my offensive stats, but, uh, the goaltendings have held me back. So I'm hoping I can get my goaltenders in order. Exactly. Yeah. And it doesn't help that, uh, I guess the Penguins struggling that have been getting their wins under the Casey to Smith. He he actually has played better uh, for them when they do win. But uh, as far as me, uh, uh, for me, it's I have three goaltenders. Then I added uh, John Quick purely because my goaltenders are basically playing against each other when I need them. And the, the NH, it's just the way the NHL schedule has been this week. Um, so uh, I'm fighting the schedule monster. Uh, it's just been a weird week for uh, schedule, I think, for some teams. Uh, some teams are playing four games, and then there's uh, a really light schedule for other teams. So you're gonna find that weekly. But um, I had I've been the schedule this week personally. I, it's been driving me nuts. But so yeah, I just had a safety net picking up John Quick. Uh, I know he's probably not gonna play maybe tonight or the next game. But the Kings playing four games. It was the best opportunity for me to counter uh, my other three studs that I don't yeah. want to drop. He'll probably uh, split duties uh, for the four games this week with uh, Pedersen. So yeah, he'll probably so. get in a couple of games before Sunday. So, so to put a bow on the goalie settings, um, we'll keep monitoring, see what everybody feels. I, I know uh, we are listening or we are uh, observing to see how some of these rules are. Uh, maybe we can make it better next year for everybody. Um, by tweaking it, but, uh, well, I and, like everything else, Jimmy, yeah. uh, all the other stats. I like it all. So great. Great. That's good to hear. Like, but like, like we ask every week, uh, if you see, have suggestions to make this league better, I'm the league offices are always more than welcome to uh, hey. hear what everybody's got. So it's, it's everybody's league. So everybody has yeah. a voice. So, so we'll move on to uh, real quick to Don Cherry's rankings. Uh, probably one of my favorite, parts of the week uh we posted that in the facebook room i wish i could bring that slide up here on the show i'll have to figure out how to youtube edit but uh without further ado uh probert etiquette obviously the number one team dave snellgrove five and oh <laughs> Boo uh, Boo he's, in, he's in one this week though with uh db cooper mark raymond 
we'll see how that one we'll talk about those games here in a minute uh nova fire brigade the uh, only four and one team they stay at number two uh so scott lanham uh seems to have weathered uh he was up and down a little bit the past few weeks but uh he's still a number two spot mark raymond has moved up from spot four to number three uh he had an impressive win last week he's an offensive juggernaut himself uh so he moves up uh and americans they won a thriller last week i think they might be a little bit overrated number four they moved up from five to four stork uh is back moving up uh, from six to five so good job there langley um Josh has dropped the farthest this week. Uh, he was at number three uh, with the two-game losing streak. Uh, he falls to number six. And then I think uh, Don Cherry, uh, his most disrespected team, I think, is the Washington Wendango. Uh, they had did move up one spot from number eight to number seven. So good job, Waylon Womack. Is he better than the other three and two teams in that division? We'll uh, we'll have to see. Uh, he's in one this week ago against uh, the Texas freezing Kuznetsovs. And he's uh, getting number eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that right after this segment. Uh, the Woody Woodpeckers, I think they're a better team than the eighth rank they got this week from Don Cherry, but they do drop one spot from number seven to eight. Yuma stays exactly where they're at at number nine. Frozen Norsemen stay at where at, they are at at number 10. Uh, Tim Kelly's DuPont Pipe Players, if they cut to get that goaltending going, I think um, they stay in their spot at number 11. And then uh, Jaden, unfortunately, the only winless team, but he does have a tie. Uh, he stays at number 12. So the Don Cherry rankings, I think, look pretty accurate. You could argue a couple of spots. Um, what are your thoughts there, Storm? I think they're pretty accurate right uh, right down here now. Uh, uh, like I said, I mean, uh, the, the standings are starting to get interesting as we move along. And uh, teams that are – struggling out of the gate can have lots of time to get it going and get back into the uh, playoff hunt there. So um, let's take a look at this week's match. Look here. I didn't have that up. Bear with me one second. We got uh, some great matchups this week. Another divisional week. Uh, Next week's going to be the second uh, division, uh, non-divisional week. But, um, okay, Don Cherry's matchup of the week, D.B. Cooper at Probert Etiquette. Right now it's 13-4, to four, Stork. Um, Go, D.B. Cooper. Yeah, Mark Raymond's got a ton of assists already this week, um, and he's loaded up on goaltending. Um, he's already got a shutout this week, so that's a great – Job. He, he picked up that Carolina goaltender. Uh, I don't even want to attempt to pronounce his name. But Freddie Anderson, once again, is hurt. And Anti Ranta, I believe, also hurt or ha didn't play. Uh, I can't pronounce his kid's name. He ended up getting a shutout the other night against the Chicago Blackhawks. So uh, I lost Stork's picture. Are you there? Oh, there yeah. you are. That was weird. Don't scare me, man. Yeah, I keep seeing your logo, but there you go. You're in and out. But uh, what uh, what do you think of this matchup? You think this is the week that Dave Snellgrove goes down? I think this is the week that Dave Snellgrove goes down. Boo! <laughs> Dave um also hasn't had much from uh, McDavid this week, as far as uh, he has. I don't even think he's even played yet. So that's tonight. Uh, three games on the docket in the NHL. It's a TNT night in the States. Buffalo at Ottawa, St. Louis at Chicago, and L.A. at Edmonton. I'm most interested in that nightcap. L.A. at Edmonton should be uh, – I think the over-under might be nine and a half in that game. But um, D.B. Cooper, we'll see how he does against Connor McJesus tonight. Um, Stork, your matchup, you're uh, in a good one with Huma, but I think you uh, have it right now 11 to 7, according to my stat tracker. Yep. Um, Anything standing out to you in this one? Uh, well, uh, I'm I'm still scoring goals and getting assists and everything, but uh, I'm keeping an eye, like I said before, I'm keeping an eye on my goaltending uh, situation. Uh, just not good, but uh, luckily... Matt Murray. My, 
Defense is uh, right on top of things. So Matt Murray got you a win this top week. Top of the league in all offensive stats. So that's good. Yeah, Julio's uh, looks like he's got Cal, Cal Peterson tonight. Uh, he's the one that's going to be starting. As Boy, far as he's going to see a lot of McJesus and Dreisaitl. Yeah, tonight, so, I'll, tell I'll tell you what, Stork. Uh, you got the save percentage on him right now, and that's pretty close. But uh, it could be a wild, uh, wild one for uh, Yuma. We'll see. He's going to be definitely getting um, getting peppered. I think. I think you're going to yeah, see a Patterson's lot of goals. Patterson's going to get uh, punch drunk tonight. Yeah. So uh, good luck, Julio. I know he's going to be watching this tonight. Here, he loves watching the Stork Death. Um, Texas freezing Kuznetsov. Like I said, this is the biggest lopsided match so far. Just two two days in. But 17 to 3 over the um red hot Washington Wendingo. Jaden hungry as hell to get a win. He's pretty much for a win. got every category so far early. I'm not sure. I haven't really d- dived in um to seeing how these matchups have gone. I know he struggled. He has Markstrom in net, and he had a, uh, even though he won that game, Markstrom was still letting a lot of goals in Monday night uh versus the Kings. Uh he also got a win from James Reimer. I know um Reimer's not a world beater, but I think he's been playing pretty good hockey in San Jose. He's yeah, he's getting a lot of games, that's for sure. I'm kind of surprised that he's, uh, but uh, he's definitely uh, the number one goalie in San Jose, that's for sure. Yeah. So, um, Waylon, like we, uh, I probably mentioned on the commission's corner a bunch on recaps. Uh, he's just getting it done by committee. He doesn't really have um, a big standout. I guess you could say uh, Sasha Barkov. Uh, Cause he's already got three points this week, uh, but Waylon offensively doesn't blow you out of the water. He just gets it done by like a committee and his goaltending really hasn't even done too much either. Uh, Cam Talbot I don't, has he even won yet. Uh, he's already owned one this week. I mean, he's not doing a terrible job. He's got a save percentage of 0.912 this week. And then Vassy, he hasn't even, um, he didn't play this week so far. He he got the win against Washington Sunday, but that was a uh, that was technically week five. So uh, Vassy not not killing it this year, I don't think for the Lightning. But uh, so Waylon, um, he'll have to uh, get it going starting now to um, come back on Jaden uh, seventeen to three. That one right now. Uh, yeah. Real quick, uh, Nova Fire Brigades. Uh, up pretty good on myself. The Adam Americans already has 10 goals. I know uh, Dylan Strom and um, Carter Verhage, capital killer Carter Verhage. Uh, I know he had a couple of goals last night. So um, 12 to 5 right now. That one, um, I think um, Scott has a really good team. Um, obviously, he's got Crosby, Pedersen, Quinn Hughes on the blue line. He hasn't done too much. This- oh, the player I wanted to talk about. Stork was Noah Dobson. What do you think of this guy in New York? Um, this guy's kind of an underrated player. And then he's got Brock Nelson, too. Those Islanders, they shoot the puck. Well, uh, Dobson is uh, – he's quietly become uh, a number one defenseman out there. I tried to get him in the draft, I, I got to admit it. But, uh, yeah, he's going to be something else. He's uh, really uh, – uh, one of the reasons why the Islanders are off to a good start this year. I know yeah. if you think about it, the Islanders the last two or three years have uh, been almost disappeared, but uh, this kid is uh, helping them uh, get off to a really good start this year. Exactly. And we haven't even mentioned about Nate McKinnon. Um, he's only got one assist this week, but uh, yeah, a great. He, he's leading the league in assists. I believe Nate McKinnon is. So, um, and then Vitek Vanacek's uh, the most consistent goalie for Nova Fire Brigade. Uh, he had a little injury scare, but he's back. So, um, Scott's just looking to sure up the goaltending, I think, because Sam, Sammy's still not 100%. Um, so, uh, Scott, though, uh, look, looking poised to go 5-1. and one. Uh, But like we said, it's only uh, Wednesday. We'll see how that goes. Uh, moving on, Wyoming Great Apes, they're looking to get back in the win column. They have a 13-5 lead right now on Woody Woodpeckers. Mark, with that heartbreaking loss last week to Adna, um, I think it, Josh is poised to get back in the win column. Um, he's got uh, 
He's got uh, a lot of kings. No, no, Drew Doughty on the blue line. I forgot what I was going to say about Josh. Uh, Timo Meyer starting to heat up. Uh, oh, and Jonathan Huberto, he scored the other night. Good to see him back in the lineup. He's just waiting for Valny Chushkin, I think, to get him back in. Uh, Logan Thompson got the loss last night for him, so his goaltending could be better. Uh, uh, Mark, he he can put the puck in the net. Um, let's see. Kopitar's got a goal for him already, and uh, John Carlson on the blue line. Ovi's been quiet so far. And uh, like I said, uh, Mark was struggling to get a goalie, but he's got Bennington back. So I think uh, he's got stuff to work with. Oh, and I think Spencer Knight eventually before the year is out. I think Bob had a great game against Cap, so I'm going to just counter what I just said. I think uh, Spencer Knight has the ability to take over that crease, but right now Bob still in the net. But uh, Mark has Spencer Knight is what I'm trying to say. But Yeah, well, so. Spencer Knight's going to be a number one goalie in the next year or two. So Yeah. And then they're, the battle of one and four. Up. Then the battle of one and four, DuPont and Frozen Norseman. Uh DuPont's winning this one 11 to 5 currently. Uh I don't I haven't been paying attention too much to this one either. Uh I know Lindholm for the pipe players, three points already this week. The Flames have been uh doing well offensively in that one game over the Kings. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh Nick. He's got Tarasenko tonight. I would like to see how he does. The Blues are starting to play better, Stork. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, putting it together, but uh, I still think there's uh, something not quite right in St. Louis right now. Yeah. I know uh, Tarasenko, uh, what was it, last year, he was a little upset that he wasn't chosen the captain. And I don't know if that has anything to do with their, their bad start this year, but I think he, he was not impressed. that uh, He thought that he was the captain on this team. So I don't know. It's just my speculation on things. I think there's a little bit of a rift in the locker room. Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, – I think well, they have a back-to-back -back coming. I know the Caps play them. They're going to be waiting for them in St. Louis after tonight. Blues are in Chicago. I'm expecting a big Blues game tonight. Uh, I'm excited to watch it. St. Louis, uh, Chicago games are always good to watch. Yeah, so I, I mean, don't count out the Blackhawks. Uh, I mean, they, they've been struggling a little bit lately, but. Uh, oh, real quick, I saw a stat. I don't know. What are they? Uh, the Ducks have yet to win a game in regulation. Have you have you heard this yet? No. Um, 16 games, I think. They won in overtime last night against the Red Wings, but. All their wins uh, have come either shootout or in overtime, Stork. They have yet to get a regulation win. And I don't know if that was their 16th or 17th game last night. I saw that on the Twitters. Um, the Ducks have yet to win a game in regulation this year. And we're wow. almost at American Thanksgiving. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. I don't know what the record is, but uh, I'll have to watch NHL Network before the games tonight. See if they mention that. But I saw that on... Um, I also saw that on NHL.com, but I haven't read the article. But uh, kind of crazy. Yeah, the Ducks, they'll play you tough and uh, take you to overtime. But amazing they haven't won one in regulation yet. So um, there's that. So so we've already gone 30 minutes, Stork. Uh, anything you'd like to talk about before we wrap up week uh, episode 7? Um, well, just one that uh, we talked about before and uh... – that's uh, setting your rosters for the week. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, my advice to everybody, this is Yahoo, so they do it a little bit different than ESPN. But it's not merely good enough to just set your rosters up for the week and then walk away. Because uh, any uh, injured player that comes back or a trade, or if you sign somebody, it can reset your rosters for the next few days. So you really got to watch that. Uh, it's probably happened to a couple of people where they thought, geez, I already set my rosters for Friday. And yeah. it's saying that I didn't set them. So um, only takes a couple of seconds just to check over your rosters before the games start. You don't want to miss any uh, man time out there. So, yeah, just uh, keep an eye on your rosters, especially if you make any signings or if you uh, – make a trade or if you take somebody off the IR. Uh, Yahoo tends to uh, 
reset the rosters that you had already set. And I hate that, but uh, that's what they do. So just keep an eye on us so nobody gets going like, hey, well, I had that guy in there. What's going on? So yeah, yeah. just keep an eye on them. It only takes a second to have a quick, uh, quick look at your roster. I don't want anybody yeah. getting burned, so. Exactly, because we—I mean, you know, everybody's got real life stuff going on. I know yeah. uh, I have a bad—I ha- I have a habit. Or actually, I think that happened to me, but I got caught it. But I, I'm usually looking at my uh, rosters uh, every on my mail loop uh, just to double yeah. check. Uh, I got on my because I'm in five leagues, and uh, I'm, I'm afraid that maybe I, I've overlooked something or something. Or plus, I'm I'm worried about maybe a last minute injury. That that happens too. I know that I happens, have a lot. Yeah. Palat's been out ever since I had him, or I dropped eventually dropped him. But like last minute, I'm on the ride home from work, and I, I just it was too late to even worry about it. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, yeah, just so, with, yeah, we'll uh, keep an eye on it because they do yeah. do uh, reset uh, rosters. Like if I were to sign, so I've, I've got all my rosters set to Sunday, but if I sign somebody like tonight or tomorrow morning or whatever. I'll look at Saturday and Sunday, and you'll see my rosters are not set. So, yeah, yeah just keep an eye on everything. Yes, sir. So, yeah, that sounds like a good way to end the show this week. Uh, before uh, I go, I just wanted to thank Mark Raymond. I don't know how it's going to we'll, – we'll see how it goes on YouTube once I upload this. But he got me this mic. Uh, hopefully it made a difference. Uh, I hear I you quite well, Jimmy. Okay, good, good. So I want to send a shout-out to – D.B. Cooper, Mark Raymond, uh, he sent this mic to me because I know he likes watching the show, and uh, hopefully that improved our – hopefully my internet's all right too. So uh, I'll be at my parents' next week. I'm bringing the laptop. I'm bringing the mic. Uh, I'll be doing the show from uh, sunny South Car- – well, North Carolina. Uh, we'll celebrate Thanksgiving together. American oh, Thanksgiving wow. start. You're going turn- back east. Yeah, it's our You're turn You're heading back start. east next week. Yeah. You, you should right. – uh, Take part in American Thanksgiving and have some uh, turkey next week. Uh, I don't know if well, I'm work, working. Well, I might. I'll make myself a turkey sandwich or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so I know you celebrate uh, in October. Uh, might as well jump to the border and uh, celebrate with us next week. So I'll be there. Uh, I have my parents. I haven't seen them in a while. I'm excited to be on the East Coast. So uh, we'll have to coordinate. I'll have to make sure uh, your times are good next week. Uh, time to be determined, but I'm off all week next week, so... Yeah, we'll get episode eight rolling. There will be a show, I guarantee it. So, uh, yeah, well, I'm off on Tuesday, so Monday or good. Tuesday works for right. me. We'll find a good time on the east side over there that correlates good with the, with the west side for you. And uh, we'll do it again and see uh, if uh, Dave Snowgrove's still undefeated. We'll find out. Ooh, yeah. ooh. So, without further ado, uh, thanks for watching today's uh, episode seven of the Storks Desk. And uh, like Badger Bob's always saying, uh, it's a great day for hockey. Can't wait to watch the hockey tonight. Good luck to your fantasy squads. Stork, I'll see you next week, buddy. All right. See you, boys. All right. Good night.